Daytime with Aston Avery. Now, uh, it is Friday then. It's Saturday, Sunday. What? As they say there. But that's one way to put that. Well, Stephen Smith, who's my, uh, he's joins me right now, my regular contributor. So hello, Stephen. And this month's Hi, all about... Aston. How are you today? Fine, thank you. It's all about admiration towards people today, Steve, Stephen. I, know, I have to say, we'll talk about it later. I admired you so much in your show the other e evening. You were incredible. Well done. Cheers, Stephen. And obviously, that being said, is there what admires what what people admire you in people, Stephen? What do people admire in me? I could tell you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I admire in people most is loyalty, uh, honesty, and people that can be themselves. Um, I, I loathe bullies. That's my number one dislike, uh, and uh, and the deluded. But I, I I really admire people that go out there and be themselves and have loyalty to others. And what, that, about you, what about you, Aston? Wow. So it's obviously, like, I think I'm on the same pattern as you. It's like people go out there to admire people. That's it, really. If they, if they are what they call trustworthy and that, they admire yeah. me as well. So I really love trustworthy. You know, someone that you can, you can be yourself with. And with that being said, Stephen, as well, we're going to be guest. You're going to love her. <laughs> oh, we're going to love her indeed. Because uh, obviously I put a spell on you, as they say. Ooh. you know. <laughs> as we are talking about hocus pocus with this because uh did you, see, Aston, did you see two hocus pocus two? yes i have i was disappointed i've got to say it was still fun but disappointing yeah. I, I, you can't beat the original that's that simple uh, really i love the original yeah. but doo -doo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go and now we're going to be joined by mel stone who is the psychic to the stars so morning mel Good morning. Hello. Morning, darling. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, so Stephen? Wonderful. So wonderful to have you on the show. It's very kind of you to offer me. And especially at this time of year, it's Halloween just passed, so it's, <laughs> it's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> now uh we're, 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 now some of us use the word witch obviously i mentioned like hocus pocus because it's all about witches in that film there so as a figure of speech of course but there are men and women with healing powers and intuitive energy that could be what they use to label as witches and wizards but are there out there very much very much so um because Sometimes witches and wizards can be used as a negative when actually it's very much a positive. Yeah. Because um, they know about necromancy, they're great communicators, they understand Mother Earth, Father Sky, they understand about botany, the plants and herbs, um, especially for healing people yeah. and healing animals. And witches and wizards is a good thing. It's not a bad thing because they have empathy. They're, yeah. they're spiritual people, I you think... know, and, and they're clairvoyant. They have um, mediumistic skills, which in the olden days was called something completely different. Yeah, you know, it's, you know? it's really so... interesting, interesting you say that because probably back in the day, people didn't like like a lot of minority groups. People didn't understand them, uh, and what they don't understand, people become frightened of so often, and that's possibly where it got the the the, <laughs> the negativity part of it. But uh, I could ask you, when did you first discover you had these powers? Well, really and truly, when I was three years old, I I knew that I was very different as a child, yeah. and I was in um. A convent um, uh, uh, because I was an abandoned child, yeah. and there was, and it was a very old, um, hundreds of years old convent in Southsea, Nazareth yeah. House, and I was seeing uh, people that had passed over and things like that. Yeah. So, and from the age of six, really, it got even more intense. Yeah. And then I started being able to tell people, um, you know, their lives and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just a natural gift that I've always had. And it's just grown. And it's like second nature to me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so that being said here, Emel, as well, life has not always been easy for you. But how do you overcome the negative here? Overcoming the negatives is 
to be positive, to have an understanding that when you go through things in life that are not so easy, not so good. And also I feel, this might sound crazy, but I feel that I chose my path for this lifetime and my parents and everything yeah. before I came here. I, I have that strong feeling of that. And I think it's about turning it around. You do a time of grieving when you go through difficulties and it's difficult and hard, but then you turn it around and I only have love in my heart. So it's about being positive and being able to help people with love and kindness and understanding and compassion. Uh, How can I do my work if I haven't suffered and been there so I can help other people to move forward in their life and give them hope and tell the truth about, you know, themselves in a kind and loving, caring way. You know, it's really interesting. We had Simon Hinton on a couple of months back, who's a, a wizard uh, <laughs> and and the most unlikely looking wizard, I have to say. He looks more like a banker <laughs> <laughs> or a model. Uh, but, you know, would you say that everyone has healing powers in them? I think that anyone and everyone has got that ability if they're tuned into it. Some some people may not know until later years in life that they've got that ability. Yeah. And it all depends on the person, you know, uh, if they're sensitive, compassionate. You know, you can have somebody who's strong and they, change, uh, and they might be not an easy person, but later on in life they, they realise certain things and they change. And then they become healers. Yes. I've, I've met a lot of wonderful people, some of them that I've read for. And in the past, they weren't easy people. Yeah. But then they became awake, if you like. Yeah, it's really interesting. Do you think a lot of people who are very angry, kind of uh, uh, in nature, are sometimes fighting uh, powers they have? Uh, and don't use them. And once they, once they discover they have them, they become a lot more empathetic, uh, a lot calmer, would you say? I agree with that 100%. Because, oh. pe you know, we there are many different um, personalities in the world. Yeah. And somebody could be really, through their life, not a very nice person, and then yeah. wake up to themselves and think... Yeah oh my, this is really not me. Why am I like this? Yeah, and then they turn and and they let the light in their life. Yeah. And I've met people like that who've become the most amazing, fantastic healers yeah. and that are out there helping people and came away from maybe corporate as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Shadow of a doubt, it has to be said there. But uh, my mum here, Mel, would love you. She gives so much of herself to others here. How can anyone ever repay someone who gives back to others here? Well, I believe that when we give of ourselves, and your mother must be an amazingly wonderful lady. Oh, she is. But when we give of ourselves, we give it with unconditional love. And we don't expect to have anything back because we're giving it from our hearts and souls and just to help somebody in their life to grow and, and to heal is an amazing gift in itself when you're giving that gift to someone else the gift of kindness and love back is more than enough yeah um you know it's like a treasure isn't it yeah. It's more than e e enough, um, you know, and and the respect that you get from from helping people is yeah. more than enough. You know, I've got to ask you a question, another question here. Um, my, my gorgeous friend, I admire Aston. Uh, I can't okay. tell you how much I admire him. Uh, um, obviously, he, he's gone through a lot in life um, and I've fought through it and come out as an incredible human being. Uh, and he lives on the, uh, the with autism, 
Uh, and I've noticed, because I've been uh, I'm, I'm patient about a Kennedy online, a lot of people that are on the spectrum seem to almost have, and this might, I'll, I'll probably get told off with this, seem to have like a third sight. They seem to be able to see things uh, more than other people do. Do you find that people living with autism have almost uh, uh, a third sight? Well, definitely, because my son is autistic. His name is Damon. And he's now 46 years old and he's a healer yeah. and he's an indigo child as well. Yeah. And and um, he has second sight and he picks up on emotions and uh, and he can know things before they happen. And, you know, autistic people are, are very clever people. They, you know, they they have lots of different gifts. Some autism or some autistic people play music, can play live in live yeah. bands, yeah. and they're clever with their hands as well yeah. as, yeah, as well as on a spiritual level as well. Yeah, I think I'm more talking this week. I mean, I, I, I hate to generalize because they say not everyone has a special talent with, 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 with autism, but however, you know, Aston's incredibly talented uh, and, and a fantastic dancer too, uh, as well as <laughs> all the other things. Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, you got, I've got, got, to, got to ask you here because people will want to know. When, when someone comes to you for a, a advice or a reading, uh, what does it involve? Well, first of all, I feel that honesty is always the best policy in a kind and understanding, caring way. And when I do a reading, first of all, I, I connect with them and I tell them a bit about themselves and their past and their emotions, yeah. where they are now, you know, what they're worried about and thinking about without them telling me anything. Yeah. And then I go into their future month by month prophecy with great accuracy. I do yeah. a life reading I am a medium, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, so I do tarot, runes, angel cards. I give um, survival evidence of life after life. Yeah. And, and um, I just basically um, predict the future as well, but then I validate the future by using different sets of cards that I shuffle in front of them face down so I can't see. And then they get to pick the cards and everything I've said for the future. If I say like next September, new location, they'll pick that card. They can't see that, nor can I. Yeah. And they'll pick that card and go, wow, that's uncanny. You know, or if they need healing, they'll pick that card about yeah. healing. What, whatever I've said for the future, as they're turning the cards, they can see it for themselves and they go, wow. This is amazing. You said that. And I said, of course. Mm -hmm. Readings are about showing people clarity and helping them to get over loss, uh, bereavement, grieving their life in some way when they've had a marriage breakup. But not only that, readings are about showing people where they're going in direction with their work, their love life, marriage, children, you know, it, it's a great thing because when people come back to me and say, oh, my God, Mel, everything you said has all come true, that for me is the biggest blessing. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's going through a difficult time, I tell them that they're going through a difficult time. <laughs> and then I then I show them when this difficult time coming to an end. That, that is coming to an end and yeah. why they may have gone through that. And I, 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 sorry, go on, uh, so, well, obviously you mentioned about readings here and Stephen mentioned about readings as well. You've given readings to some of the big names in the celebrity world here. Can you name some of those? Well, I'm not really supposed to, am I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really supposed to. Oh, go on, push it, behind me, behind me is a whole wall of signed aut autographs. <laughs> of all the people, well, not all of them, because not all of them are up. All right, then. Well, I'll give you a couple. Yeah. I'll give you a couple. Yeah. Um, yeah. Madonna, I've read four. Um, I I used to read, God rest his soul. Prince was oh. the most amazing, loving, caring, beautiful soul. 
and I've read for him a few times, and um, he was wonderful. Uh, I've read a lot of, uh, a lot of people, Kate Winslet. I don't really want to go on about it. No, but it's just nice. It's understandable. I mean, as I've met the listeners, and we won't ask you to say too much about it because obviously it's private, but it's really nice to hear. And the nice thing is you treat everyone the same, whether they're a celebrity, I take it. Whether, I do. Whether oh, it's the, uh, I definitely, which is, I definitely uh, do. And also know, which is quite interesting, a lot of business people ring you up before making decisions on things to get advice. How did that come about? Well, I always say when I do readings for people, I always say, look, don't go into a situation that you're not 100% sure about. Yeah. Always ring me. You know, I don't charge for that. Just ring me. Yeah. And I give the good advice and I'll pick a few cards. I'll tell them without them telling me what is wrong, what's going on, whether it's good whether it's not a, a, a good decision to make because I give them the answer why. And and they're very happy. They always come back. You know, it was really funny, Aston. I went to a, a, an interview uh, for a, 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 just a, a job that was only going to go on for a couple of weeks or so. And I walked in, the lady went to me, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you've got it. And I went, oh, but, I, but, I haven't, but I haven't said anything yet. Wow. Um, so my psychic described you. <laughs> so, so that now we're at four month, days old into the month into this month here, Mel. As well, is this a good month for Stephen here to get a date according to the current oh, moon God. status? <laughs> well, I'm going to say this, Stephen. Next year and yeah. the year after is going to be amazing for his love life, well, and that is that that is a hundred percent. And I think any months of the year for Stephen to go out and enjoy himself and have a bit of romance <laughs> is going to be amazing because he is such a loving, caring soul and he's a brilliant healer as well. He's just a very great personality, oh outgoing. I'll get, I'll get big but you are, you're kind, Bam. you're... You're a lovely man, <laughs> and I love you oh, to bits. So sweet. <laughs> Aston, thanks for that. No um, problem. <laughs> we love speaking to you. You've got to come on again at some point for us because we just really enjoyed you. How can the listeners find you? Well, they can find me on Malane Stone. Um, oh, what is it? Info at malanestone.com. So I'll put it on the YouTube video on the on Aston and I site afterwards. I'll put all the details how to get hold of you. Uh, uh, and it's been incredible. I really enjoyed chatting to you. I'm sure. I'll just tell you quickly. I used to have my own show on Sky TV. Oh, did on you? Des wow. Destiny TV. It was worldwide. Oh. So well, you're, and you're, you're the UK wide here. We started off in Basildon, didn't we, Aston? Yeah. This show. That goes everywhere, and you can get it on your Alexa. You just have to ask for it on Alexa, uh, which is a funny look. It's a crystal ball shape. Uh, and uh, you'll also be able to catch up with you on YouTube. Thank you ever so much. Thank, Thank you, Mel. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. Oh, have I a brilliant it. day. Great start to the day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. God bless. Bye.